Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a little while since I've uploaded and it's been, boy, over a month, I think, since I uploaded a time lapse. So uh, yeah, that is what we have today. I've got a little time lapse. Well, actually it's an epic time lapse because it's like 15 hours of footage, but um, I have distilled it down into this shorter format here uh, of me creating a Dahlia and I'm going to use uh, mixed media uh, to create that kind of a vintage inspired scientific illustration type look. And um, I'm going to have uh, all of this footage, obviously, formatted differently in a much longer way um, and me sort of explaining it and unpacking it and sharing all the details in my process that is going to be the content for my next Skillshare class uh, today is September 28th and the, the class is going to be coming out by October 5th on Skillshare, but it will be all over social media. So um, if you're inter interested in the class and wanting to know when it's published, be sure you're following me on Twitter and Instagram at Kendall Hillegas. Uh, yeah, so that will be coming up. And um, I have been spending a lot of my time working on this and then um, have been somewhat busy with client work. Although, to be honest, I've been in a little bit of an in-between phase um, where I am spending, uh, all right, well, well, let me backtrack here. I've been listening obsessively to the creative pep talk podcast. Um, I found it kind of late. I know it's been around forever. I had heard about it. Well, not forever, but for a long time. And I had been hearing really good things about it. But um, I, you know how it is. You have your podcast that you like and that you listen to, and I'm always listening to audiobooks too. So um, I just had never gotten around to it. But um, then Fran did an episode, and um, I, of course, had to listen to her episode, and then I uh, loved it because it it was Fran. But then I also really liked a lot of what uh, Andy had to say. So I started listening to more episodes, and it's just been so helpful, you guys. And I'm sure if you already listened to it, you already know that and you're like, yeah, that's old news. But uh, if you haven't listened to it yet and you are a, a freelancer, some sort of a creative, I, I really can't recommend it enough. Um, so I've been listening to a lot of that and then um, feeling like there are some things that I needed to um to tackle in terms of like the business side of my creative practice um, and have just been, yeah, spending some mental energy putting those things into place. So um, that is what I have been doing. Um, and one of my larger client projects recently, another packaging one, should be coming out soon. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a frog in my throat. Anyway, um, I will let you guys know. Um, and other new projects that I had mentioned, the, the Spoonflower fabric, uh, that is all up and ready to go. Um, so I'm on Spoonflower now. Uh, yeah, and I think those are most of the updates. All right, so I am going to answer some of the questions, just a few random questions that you guys have posted on videos over the past few weeks. Uh, also on that note, I have been trying to work my way through the comments. Um, as usual, I'm behind, but I, I'm trying to respond to everybody and especially to the folks that that commented on the, um, the being a freelancer and being a parent videos. Uh, those are just like such, yeah, such amazing comments. I know I always say that, but you guys uh, keep just, um, yeah, really kind of bowling me over with that. So um, thank you to everybody who commented. I am going to try to get to all of them. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I obviously appreciate it so much, but another reason I'm so glad you guys have done that is that I think it's really good for you to see each other's comments, especially when we're talking about something so, um, personal, like being a mother and being an artist. I think that's something that needs more conversation. So, um, to those, to those of you who have been willing to be vulnerable and share your experiences there, I know um, I'm, I'm sure that it's helpful to other people too and not just to me. So thank you for, for doing that. Um, and before I answer the questions that we're going to answer today, I also wanted to give a shout out to some of the new patrons from the last couple weeks. Um, we have five new patrons, Coco Sita, Susan, Stephanie, 
Josie Muse, and Peggy. So thank you to those five new patrons. I am posting um, special content on Patreon. I've been uh, just started a monthly live stream, which is basically the only place to see me do real time work if you're interested in that. Um, and then I have uh, every three months art surprise packs going out. Um, this last one that went out, I included I included fine art prints and postcards and stickers and other surprise goodies. So um, definitely take a look over there if you are interested. And thank you so much to everybody who is supporting me that way. I've honestly just been uh, so grateful. And I posted about this on Twitter yesterday, but I feel like the first time I did Patreon, I, I wasn't really in the right headspace for it. And I think it was just because I had so much other stuff going on with Penelope being a newborn and I just wasn't able to to think about it in the right way. And this time around, I have just been going at it with like much less pressure for myself and feeling like, all right, what can I, how can I approach this in a way that is going to... Um, invite you guys and let you guys support uh, me making videos if you want to um, in a way that doesn't make it unrealistic for me to actually fulfill it. Um, and then also have just been um, realizing that some of the folks that are on there, most of the folks that are on there, actually, it's just like this really intimate little community of people who um, really want to support my work and me. And um, that's just um, a really humbling feeling. And, um, and I've been really grateful for it and have been trying to, yeah, I've been trying to kind of treat it like my own little, um, my own little team. And it kind of feels like that. Like I have a, a team in my corner. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for you guys. And, uh, that is all I will say about Patreon for now. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and answer a few of these questions. Um, I think there's four questions. So, um, I've screenshotted, so I'll put the screenshots up as I answer them. All right. So the first question is from Becky. Uh, thanks for the video. I'm an illustrator and mom to two girls who are four and a half and one years old. I could relate to so much of what you said. Do you know of any online groups for mom illustrators and freelancing? So I don't know of any groups. I, I do belong to some, um, I do belong to some, uh, private Facebook groups for, um, for illustrators, for, um, for female identified illustrators, but I don't know of any that are specifically for illustrators and moms. What I would say is, um, if you haven't heard the podcast, uh, creative play date, so it's different than the one I mentioned earlier. I was talking initially about creative pep talk, which is fantastic. Creative play date is also amazing. It's, uh, done by, uh, Michelle Condrich, who is an illustrator and a parent and um, they have a Twitter as well. I don't know if they have Instagram or if they're on Facebook, but if you look up the podcast and I'll link it in the description box, I'll link Creative Pep Talk as well, of course. Um, but yeah, look in the description box, check out Creative Play Date. Um, and the other one is there's an, it's also a podcast also done by, I don't know if she's an illustrator or a designer, but a creative who is a parent. Um, the name of the podcast is doing it for the kids and it's more like general freelance slash parent life. So, um, as, a, as opposed to specifically illustration and Michelle Condrich does mostly talk to illustrators on, on creative play date. So I'd say creative play date, if you're specifically interested in illustration slash parent and, um, doing it for the kids, if you're more interested in general freelance slash parenting, um, and it's not, I shouldn't say parenting because neither of them are like about parenting advice. They're more just, uh, stories and experiences from people who are freelance creatives and who also happen to be, um, building a family, having kids, etc. So, um, those will both be linked in the description box. Uh, hey, and the next question is from Christy G. This was about the video that I posted on the, um, Green Valley Organics project. So that's what her, her question is relating to here. Uh, these are incredibly beautiful. I was wondering, do you ever get permission to use clients illustrations like these in your own products like cards or print? 
uh, cards or prints, excuse me, uh, or does it just pre- depend on the client and the kind of contract you sign? Um, so mostly yes to the last question. It depends on the client and the kind of contract. So for the Green Valley Organics project, that was basically a buyout. So um, I retained it the um the rights to say that I had done the work and to include it in my portfolio and I could include it in printed materials as long as it's just for self promotional purposes so like on mailers that I would do to um to send to other creative agencies or potential clients um yeah including on my website social media that sort of thing um but I wouldn't be allowed to like put it on a print that I would a fine art print that I would sell in my shop or um, on a sticker or t-shirt or whatever. Basically, if, if it's something that I would sell, I could not, I'm not allowed to use it for that, for this project, for this particular project. But, um, for other projects, it really just depends. Like for work that I've done recently for Milk Street, you know, they, they have the rights to use it. I can't remember off the top of my head. I have to look in, in my contract, but, um, it's somewhere, it's less than a year basically that they have the rights for it. Um, and, uh, I'm able to use it in my portfolio as soon as it's published. And then I think after an initial period of like 30 days of exclusivity, um, then I could use it to make art prints or to make patterns or whatever else I wanted. Um, and I would say that's actually a fairly common, um, divide, like the divide between packaging work being more like the Green Valley project where you can't use it for anything else. And then editorial work being more like Milk Street, where as long as you don't like share the work before it's published, that you can use it for, for other stuff as well. So yeah, it really just depends on the client. And then for, um, for private commissions, um, like an individual coming to me and being like, Hey, can I get a painting of my dog or of this cake or whatever? Um, those, the standard is that I retain all of the reproduction rights. So, um, if somebody were to like commission a portrait of their grandmother and then want to get prints of it, they would have to come to me to get the prints. They're not able to make, or they're not supposed to, uh, make prints on their own. Um, and depending on what the subject is, if it's something that is like very general or like not so specific as someone's grandmother, then I might include it in promotional materials or I might make prints out of it um but a lot of the time with private commissions it it's very specific so it's like somebody's dog or somebody's um yeah somebody's grandma something that that nobody else is really going to want to buy prints of so um and that's a good thing to keep in mind when you're doing your pricing as well um if if you are able to have a secondary market for something, then it, it makes it so you can, at least for me, it makes it so I can keep my pricing a little bit, try to keep it more affordable as opposed to like, if there's no secondary market for it, then it, it the price needs to increase. That's part of why pricing for packaging is higher than pricing for editorial, um, both because there's no secondary market um, and also because um, for packaging, they're making a lot more money off of it um, off of you, off of your work. They, they have a lot more value, um, out of a packaging illustration than a magazine does out of an editorial illustration. Um, all right. I hope that answers the question. Hope that makes sense. Let me know if you guys have other questions on that topic. All right. The next one, uh, this is from Arky. Hi, Kendall. Always like, love your vlogs. Just want to ask about those pesky emails. Do you reply to them that you declined or do you just ignore them? Um, this one, I think this question was in reference to, um, the emails that I have gotten about, um, being invited to have the honor of being invited to be in some prestigious journal, by the way, you just have to pay us lots of money or basically like emails inviting you to be involved in promo projects that you're doing work for free or emails inviting you to be a part of a, a printed material, but you have to pay them to have your work included, uh, those sorts of invitations. So my basic approach, if, if the email does not have my name on it, I may or may not reply with a no thanks, but if they, if it has my name and it's spelled correctly, K-E-N-D-Y-L-L, I can tell that someone has obviously at least gone through the trouble to look me up and look up how to spell my name. And that means most likely a human sent the email instead of a computer. 
set instead of an algorithm. So if it's obvious to me that a human sent the email, I will take the time to respond and say, you know, thank you for inviting me at this time. I'm not interested, blah, 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 that sort of thing. So um, I do try to have like at least just some basic courtesy because I feel like our world is increasingly small and um, obviously this is like a huge shot in the dark and who knows if any of this would ever happen, but I do have the scenario in mind of like, you know, maybe somebody is sending me a kind of a spammy, lame email today, but maybe in five years they're going to be an art director or, or who knows what that person is going to be doing down the road. So I just want to take the opportunity to to be kind where I can. It doesn't cost me anything. It takes me two seconds to write that email. Um, however, if it seems like it was written by a bot, um, if it's just like a, hello, we love your content, and then it's obviously like a pasted, like something that copied and pasted a title of a video or whatever, um, you know, you can just tell when something was written by a human and when something was written by a bot. So if it was written by a bot, sent by an algorithm, I don't worry about responding. If it seems like it was probably written by a human, I do try to send a response. Um, but I know other illustrators just like blanket ignore them. And that's totally fine. If you don't have time to do it or you, you're not interested, I think not responding is fine too. So uh, that is what I have to say about that. All right, last question. This is from Federica. Hi, Kendall. I really appreciate this video and your honest feelings and opinions about being a mom and worker. I'm that kind of mom, too, who cannot abandon the workplace. It's part of me to be an illustrator. I used to be an illustrator, studied so hard to become one one day, but I lost my way a bit with my first child, and now I have a second one, too. It's a pleasure for me to see an artist woman like you who did not give up and kept going with all the little daily struggles. I always keep dreaming of getting back to my art. I really miss it. Do you think as an artist and a mom, it's too late for me to start drawing again after a few years of stopping? So I've talked about this in other videos before, um, but uh, in case you haven't heard this part of my story, um, yes, I did go to art school and I did graduate with a degree in fine art, but I didn't really draw at all for like the first four or five years after graduation. Um, and that's for various reasons. And I, I did talk a little bit about it in the art autobiography video, and I've touched on it in other videos. And I can go more in depth into it in like the overall timeline of my career, uh, if that's something you guys are interested in. So let me know about that. But, um, but basically, I did not have, and I don't even think really anybody has, or very few people have, a totally linear trajectory. So it's not like I you know, just got my degree and graduated and knew exactly what I was going to do and started right away. Um, yeah, there were, I spent lots of years just kind of I don't know, trying other things and noodling around. And uh, like I said, I can, I can talk about that in another video if you guys want. But, um, but basically, yeah, I don't want anybody to get the idea that I, I started super young and had like really clear direction and I knew exactly what I was doing. I actually really kind of identify as, as a late bloomer, as somebody who feels like they didn't really know which direction they wanted to go in until they were in their later 20s. So, um, yeah, I would answer it's never too late. Uh, I feel like if you, um, you could be like I was, you could be 27 or you could be 37 or however old, uh, the, the main question is how hard you're willing to work now and how much you're able to dedicate yourself to it now. Uh, and, uh, yeah, how, I guess how much you can kind of shift and change and be resilient. So, um, yeah, I think it is, it's absolutely never too late. The art world especially is full of examples of people who didn't really, um, get their feet under them, uh, in terms of their artistic vocation until they were older. So, uh, I think you should never, ever use that as an excuse not to try. So yeah, I hope that helps. And I hope that you will, um, dive back in and get back into your art. All right, that is it for this video, I think. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here so that I can get it uh, edited and uploaded. 
And uh, yeah, thank you everybody for watching. As usual, let me know if you have any questions. You can put those in the comment section and subscribe and like and turn on the notifications, all of that. And I hope everybody has a great week, great weekend, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.